One, it won't fit there. Oh. Two. Oh. Two, it's going to be way too zoomed in. <laughs> Yeah, I want it. So right, it, will, right. it will get you I to like it, here. I want it like this. You can put go in the middle quickly. No, because I want it like that. The that whole is, time. It'll, it'll be more than that. Get closer then. It'll be like it'll get really close. It'll be like this. That's way too close. Oh, I love cuddling with you. That's weird. Oh, I love it. I'm not doing that. It's oh, fine. Oh. Hi guys, my name is Harry T. F. Fennell. Hi, I'm Diva. I look like Ned from Spider Man. Today I'm doing a video with Ned from Spider Man, and what we're going to talk about is online coaches. Tell me my back's big. Tell me Your my back. back is freaking tiny. Oh, brilliant. Thanks. Ages ago, I said I was going to do a video with my coach. Couldn't find him. Had to bring D Waz in instead. He's one of my clients. No, I'm, uh, I've been I'm, training D Waz. How long have I been training you? Since April. Since April. Yeah, I've been coaching D Waz since April. Uh, it's not doing very well. Goes off program often. I do. Recently switched to bodybuilding from powerlifting, which is shame because he showed such promise. But especially his bench press was fantastic. Fantastic. Um, obviously, I'm talking about myself here. <laughs> what do you mean? What? <laughs> and we're going to talk about why people piss us off. Everyone. <laughs> people in general. No, we're talking. We're talking about online coaches in general. Coming from an online coach, I can't, I'm not an online coach, so I need to bring an online coach in to roast online coaches. Which I guess would be a sequel to the problem with personal trainer video, or personal trainers. You're a personal trainer, aren't you? Exactly, that's why I could do the problem with personal trainers, because I was, I was the problem. You yourself. I, I acknowledge the problem, yeah. and I accept it, and then overcome it. In the process. What did you in learn? the process of overcoming. What did you learn from it? No Nothing. comment. No comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> if you go on Instagram, especially in the powerlifting world, probably less so in bodybuilding, a fair few people uh, online coaches these days. And why is that a problem, you may ask? And that's what we're going to talk about. One of the reasons I embarked on a coaching journey with Diwaz, Lord in Plexium himself, was because of his qualifications. Plexium, that's his brand, uh, that's his coaching brand, if you weren't aware. Uh, his links will be down below and probably floating around on screen somewhere. What are your qualifications, Diwaz? Oh <laughs> what, <laughs> what are your qualifications, uh, Okay, well, so I've got a Bachelor of Science in Sports Science. Uh, I've got a Master of Science in Strength and Conditioning. I've got a level two, whatever that's called. Fitness instructor. Fitness instructor, yeah. And yeah, tomorrow will be level three PT. Yeah, I've done two years as in intern s &C. Basically, he's not very qualified, but he's more qualified than most. <laughs> yeah, so that's where we go with it. I think one of the biggest misconceptions with both, like going with someone who has a Strength and Conditioning degree is that they would only work with strength-based athletes, perhaps. And obviously, I've recently embarked on the bodybuilding journey and Diwaz is still my coach alongside another Lord in Plexium person, Dan. Another but Lord in Plexium person, yeah. Lord, another, another Lord, well he's not the Lord of Plexium, this no, is no, no. the Lord of Plexium, Lord, yeah. but this is maybe a squire of Plexium. People without qualifications <clears throat> find almost an opportunity that presents itself in which they could probably make a tolerable amount of money by doing less work than they should, perhaps. Go on Instagram, go on the powerlifting hashtag, a lot of people are gonna pipe up saying online coach, Look at their qualifications and credentials. A lot of times, not many. Not many. Do you have a degree? No. Are you a competitive powerlifter? Maybe, 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 maybe once. Maybe. Which is another maybe issue in itself. Yeah. Another issue. Competes one time and thinks they can start coaching. That's another. Yeah. Competes once and suddenly thinks they're an implexium lord. It upsets me too. Silly people. It's hard coaching you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, apparently I'm a terrible client. I literally, I literally, co I've competed once and now I coach you guys. It's madness. I think we're doing a good job. I think we're doing a good job. You've lost three kilos in the last six months, and we've got uh, about one month to lose another ten. So I think we're doing pretty, <laughs> doing pretty good. I was like, we're going pretty well. It's going pretty well so far. That's how you want to do it. Ten by ten, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Why not? Well, if you give me ten by ten, I'm leaving. But you're not. Yeah, I'm gonna go to a new coach. Well, you don't like German vol volume? No, I've done it before, and it made me cry. Oh, GVT is great. No, it's not. I did it once on squats, and I was sore for yeah, four I days. Turns I couldn't. For a week, can't put that in. <laughs> Definitely can't put that in. If they've got the experience, obviously that makes up for a lot of the well, lack, lack of, of higher like, education, perhaps. Yeah, like I'm not saying you've got to go and get a degree. If you're still going out and learning, that's that's better than what most people do. So. Well, that's the thing, especially like 
looking at personal training as well. <clears throat> People get the qualifications, some think now they've qualified as a personal trainer, that's it for their research. They don't have to do further expansion or broaden their, I guess, horizons regarding academia. Yeah. Whereas that is not the case. No, Things just... change, opinions should True. change over time. Yeah. New training methods come to light, statistics, studies get presented. And you're like, oh, actually, this statistics, statistics. We're not saying that if you don't have if you don't have a degree, you can't be a coach. Not at no. all. But I'm saying at least be either experienced within the sport you're trying to coach, yeah, or have some qualification to some standard, i.e., maybe even level three personal training qualification. That that's something. Yeah. But also focus on broadening your horizons and actually learning consistently. Don't just be like, okay, well, I was taught this in PT school. That and is gospel. It. And we're going to go with that. If I base everything I taught my clients off what I learned in PT school, they'd have a bad time. Full range of motion wouldn't be a thing. Protein intake would be far lower than, than it should be. You need to update your knowledge frequently and then apply the methods and techniques either to yourself before applying them to others or find studies that solidify or justify the approach that you're looking to apply to people and that should show that there is evidence suggesting that it will work. But then there's obviously the individuality, you have to tailor it to different people. Some people respond well to certain things, others don't. I say these new people charge like 20, 20, 30 pounds a month and everyone's obviously gonna go to them thinking they're quite cheap because if you compare it to the prices of other people, a lot of friends and people who are at I guess like my level we charge around <laughs> well, I don't want to say it like that because well, I don't get want to, to my sound level. like the or... yeah master of science anyway like, no, that's, not, that's not what my, I'm saying okay. that wasn't my intention so I'm not on your level forgive me the value then gets brought down for kind of everyone else who charges let's say 50 plus and then they will expect everyone else to be kind of like on the cheaper side which just it just degrades kind of like the value that you're providing. Like the service that we provide is obviously quite what we think is quite good. So it's, you, it's specialist. Do you yeah, know what especially like? yeah. So you don't want to be almost like compared to someone who's charging twenty to thirty pounds a month, and then for you to think that we're going to be charging a similar amount for uh, what is in effect a better service. Well, ultimately, it's like with any kind of monetary exchange for a service you pay what you expect to get out don't be fooled by coaches who are overcharging you yeah so if you're playing if you're paying triple figures for someone who isn't a top tier coach that doesn't provide nutrition side of things as well training regular sport then you're being mugged off or like bodybuilding competition prep so always, always research yeah research. research and compare look at different coaches look at their testimonials from clients if you know any of their clients personally, ask for a genuinely honest review from them. How much do you charge for coaching? And what are your options? Lowest option is called unguided, un, unguided programming, which just includes your program and then you talk to, talk to your coach at the start and at the finish. So that starts at £39 a month. And then the next step up would be the single coach, which is kind of like regular contact with the coach. You do your weekly check-ins, you do your video analysis of your lifts, £59 a month. The next option up is two coaches, so it's myself and Chris. Uh, I went to university with Chris, that's how I met Chris. Uh, he also did a... You said Chris about three times <laughs> in like 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, so he also went and... <laughs> did a sports science degree and then he did the strength and conditioning masters with me. That is 80 pounds a month. And the next option up includes either the single coach and nutrition or double coach and nutrition. Don't do that. So, you can do that. I'm not saying don't do that. I don't do that. I do single and nutrition. Yeah. So the prices depends. It varies person to person. So it depends on what you're doing like macro wise or like full meals. So it just depends. And there's also like not an application process, but not everyone would be accepted. Yeah. Not everyone would be accepted. Because it. it's quite a lot of work for, I would say, a very reasonable price. Obviously, I'm coached by DWAS and Dan. Considering what I pay them, they do a lot for me which I like I said in one of my recent Instagram posts I'm very appreciative for of you can't expect them to take on every client that presents themselves to them because ultimately if they're trying to give a specialized and bespoke service to people it's quality over quantity especially with nutrition which is a yeah. big thing people are lazy with food people are lazy with training the easy bit yeah eating is eating is hard bit. I met Dan similarly through like like Chris we met in uni he's um, a bodybuilder he is a bodybuilder he's big boy the other issue is with these uh, maybe lesser qualified coaches, because they take on so many clients, they can't really give each ind individual client mass amounts of time because programming takes a, takes a while. It does take a while. I mean, it's not like a 10 minute job, especially with the first program for someone when you're still in that kind of, I guess, gauging them phase. It takes time, it's hard. Even when you've been doing it for years, it, you have to put effort into it Very and you have to apply the knowledge you've learned previously. Yeah. Whereas a lot of these quantity-based clients will say, 
churn out the same thing. It's very similar everyone. programs. Granted, not everyone needs massively different programming. No, yeah. That being said, that's not the case in this instance. A lot of people basically get a template of what they want to follow and then maybe make slight changes and send off to 30 people. And then they'll almost change things for the sake of changing them, not because they need changing. Doing like a new movement for four weeks and you put like 15 kilos of on that movement, you're not getting 15 kilos stronger. No. You're just getting better at the movement. You're getting more familiar with it and you're learning, I guess, biomechanical efficiency. Yeah. How There's to perform always, it. Yeah, always a learning process whilst with any new movement so whenever you put something in you should kind of let that phase out for a bit like you want to make the movement as efficient as possible obviously and then the more you do the, pro uh, the movement the more efficient you're going to get so say you start a movement you might start at a relatively light weight or a lightish weight will feel heavy to you and then the more you learn how to do the movement the weight's going to kind of spike up quite rapidly but then people stop with the said assistance work and then they change it to something else so yeah, basically what you did in that learning phase was basically just learn the movement and then when you change it, what you're going to do is do the same thing again yeah. and you won't really be progressing all that much. While the numbers may be increasing, it's more the learning effect as opposed to working it. So that's the video. That is the video. Hopefully you tolerated it. Hopefully you tolerated it. Are you going to just copy everything else? <laughs> He's just going to copy everything Are you going to say Chris's name three times in 10 Chris, seconds Chris, again? Chris. <laughs> if you haven't already, have a gander at Diwaz's Instagram, it's not very interesting. Have a gander in Plexium, their website, new website coming soon. New website coming uh, soon. Their Instagram, have a look at Chris, have a look at Dan. Diwaz is claiming, claiming, being the operative word there, to start a YouTube channel soon, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. This is Diwaz, I coach him, looks like Ned from Spider Man. Shout out to Five Foot Fitness, see you in a bit. <laughs>